All right, everybody, welcome back. Um, wanted to put together an after action report on that last Ark of Osiris. There was quite a bit of fighting, quite a bit of melee, lots of structures needing to be taken and retaken, uh, lots of movement on, on my side, and I'm sure once Ronnie's video comes out, you'll see a lot of the same on his side. So um, just wanted to give you some feedback on the actual battles, show you some of the reports, um, and then also I wanted to go into my thoughts on my T5 Samurai and try to figure out if I want to make a move. I'll, I'll give you some pros and cons that I got from the fight itself as I was using them and then just kind of discuss really quick what it would mean to change to a Rome or uh, even a France or even further maybe change out of an infantry uh, civilization altogether. So let's go into it. Um, I, I saved a few a few of the uh, the battle reports here and uh, there's quite a few really good ones a lot of them are from uh, me def uh, defending with other alliance mates inside of shrines or uh, attacking cities after we ported into their their forward obelisk uh, also just a lot of open field battles too where I, I was kind of caught out in the open a little bit and you know thankfully I had good enough commanders with the troops that I had where it made a lot of sense and I will say kind of just through some of these battle reports I, I made my second I had a hard time deciding what I wanted to do for my second infantry group I have a max Yulji um, I've got a max Sun Tzu I've got uh, Barca and I've got an almost max Scipio uh, and I was just trying to figure out what would be the best combination and I, I chose Sun Tzu and, and Barca as my second pair and I gotta say, they were they did really well. I, I was surprised how tanky they were, uh, how much uh, damage they were putting out between the nukes from Sun Tzu, which I changed to a full infantry tree before the battle, and then spec to rejuvenate in the skill line uh, as the second uh, second skill line. Um, and they, they did really well. I was really surprised. I thought they were going to be uh, just kind of like a meat a meat shield with how many troops that we could bring uh, because of Barca's uh, troop capacity skill and man they, I, I was really happily surprised pleasantly surprised about um, how they performed on the field but we'll go through some of these right now and obviously the the Richard Charles pair was the star of the show with <clears throat> how much damage they could tank with the heal from Richard any, any group with Richard is going to be the star of the show just because he's that good um, but this was one, um, this was just an open field battle, it looks like. Uh, yeah, so I went out towards some of the cities and started attacking them whenever uh, whenever I poured it into their forward obelisk and just took my Richard group and started attacking their cities and they swarmed me. Uh, and this is what came out of it. So I started with just under 300,000 troops. This group can get to 306,000, but I guess I didn't heal all of them enough as I went. But um, this group here basically zeroed out. Uh, this was a, a level 50 and a level 45 double C, which doesn't make sense to me. Maybe that's why they got wrecked. Um, an archer, epic commander, primary with a legendary cavalry commander, secondary. None of their skills match up. I mean, they're both technically nukers, but unless they went full skill and garrison talent I mean that just doesn't make sense so um, I, I would say that's probably why he had 216,000 severely wounded that was a big a big bust for for that governor there and then a couple of these other ones uh, were zero just because they got hit by my AOE from Richard but didn't actually attack me uh, this was another one of course they only had 115,000 troops attacking me and they got you know smashed because it was Boudicca Minamoto with half the troops that I had there's no you know there's nothing you could do about that uh, this was a properly, this was the T5 here, and uh, I did put some work in, and I think I did, yeah, just looking at, um, you know, the lost and the slightly wounded, it looks like I did um, put some good work on them, and that's just infantry versus cavalry, but uh, it looks like he ran away because he, he knew he was going to get, um, he knew he was going to just get zeroed out. Uh, same thing with this one, this was his second group that was attacking me. And I'm actually kind of surprised. Well, I mean, I, I don't think he was my primary target, so I'm, I'm, I'm still kind of surprised with how much farther down um, he went. I'm not sure what his 
It's not going to tell me what his. Um... Yeah, here we go. So he had a max, almost maxed out Richard and five four four one Charles. I mean that's that's respectable. Uh, I did have a lot more attack and defense than him on infantry. So I mean that's that's the the tail of the tape right there. Is research is a big deal. I'm not sure if maybe their alliance research isn't where ours is from a war standpoint. We have maxed out war everything. So uh, same thing with this one here. Um, 51 Boudica, 45 Chow Chow. That's a good pairing um, for nuking and if, assuming that uh, Sah Sahar 94 brought um, cavalry. It's a good pairing, but against a Richard Charles infantry group with T5, that's there's that's that's just not going to work. Same thing with Dwarf here. Um, Scipio and Chow Chow, I'm not really 100% on that pairing either. Uh, and again, you, you can see the ones that, that lost a lot of the, the power and a lot of the, the units just didn't have a good um, commander pairing. And again, this was probably about halfway through the battle. So at this point, they were probably just trying to throw some stuff together to, to throw at my armies and throw at my city. But other than that, I mean, it's, there were good battles. There was a couple of really good players on their team. Um, obviously, the T5 had some power to bring. They, the T5 on their team was the highest power on the entire map including us so um and then they had a, a nice 30 33 or 34 million player that had some really good commanders leveled up too uh Ciccioni, i think is his name so he did he did really good too um i think he just he was kind of left alone by himself on the left side after the t5 went over to the right side with ronnie so he just he didn't have enough unfortunately um and again some more some more battles here eighty four thousand. um this was another rich this was a full a full group richard um, took out about 84,000 troops and lost 4,000. So that's not too bad. Uh, okay, so this is when I started attacking. This is when I poured it into um, their obelisk on their side, and I started attacking the cities around the obelisk to get them to port out because they kept jumping behind us and capturing our stuff, so I wanted to get rid of their cities so that they would have to come from the front, which would take them longer, and then we could maneuver towards the front to kind of block them. Uh, but this was one. This was another one here. And this was just me attacking them. This wasn't a rally. Um, yeah, Sun Tzu and Richard, or I'm sorry, Sun Tzu and Barca did some good work there. Uh, same thing here, Sun Tzu and Barca. This was just me repeatedly going back and forth to get him to teleport, to teleport out. And this was the first attack right here. It was a Richard and Charles. Um... This was uh, my fourth group, which again, I'll go into after I go through these reports. We only got a few left. Um, I'll talk about this fourth group. This was actually only a T4 group. This was not a T5 group. This was my archers with Osman and YSG, uh, and they did really good too. Osman put out some serious uh, serious skill damage for sure. Uh, this again was me attacking their obelisk um, by myself, and they had 640,000 troops and I, I smashed it and I think a lot of it had to do too with once they got this was I think when they were starting to get into the red and I wasn't even budging I was still high green they just abandoned it just to stop losing troops um, this one again this was a good open field fight again his 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 commanders were a little low he had more more troops than I did um, but his commanders just weren't specced up enough and that was probably a mixed troop army, I would guess. And I had a cavalry only Max Pelagius, Max Minamoto army. So just commanders won out on that one. Um, there's, just no, there's just no question about it. Uh, same thing here. Um, <laughs> oh, no. Okay, so this was a really good one. Um, this is when I poured it in, like exactly when I poured it into their obelisk. And uh, they started immediately swarming me with all their armies. So... The folks that were in there, there was two from Sin Meliodas, Mel, Meliodas and Old Hero. And um, they just kind of zeroed themselves in my city. And I had all my troops out either in the obelisk as defense or on the field fighting or on a shrine or whatever. So all I had left was my T4 archers in here. And Lohar and Boudica were auto-assigned as my garrison. And it still stomped them. 
Um, I was kind of surprised as soon as I saw Lohar pop up when my city started getting attacked. I was like, holy crap, that's not good. <laughs> but yeah, sure enough, they just kind of broke against my city. Um, Lohar obviously does not have any garrison talents, uh, so that didn't help me. Lohar isn't even maxed. He is now, but he isn't even maxed. He had one skill point left, so I'm not sure how this happened with a level 53 Scipio and a level 50 double C hitting it and... Um, a Julius Caesar and Richard hitting it with 200,000. I mean, to me, that should have been a spanking on my city, but for some reason, um, I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, this was a really good, uh, no, this was the rally when I rallied their obelisk. So um, they were trying to hit me as the rally. It was, I think it was me, Kuba. Let me see. Yeah, it was, no, it was me, Wasabi, and Pit Boss here. We had some T3 in there and then T4. And then I had my T5 in there. Um, they were hitting the rally as it was marching towards the obelisk and daisies zeroed his army there uh, erroneous zeroed his army on the way there um, Shira was in the obelisk and you can see obviously the the commanders are they didn't switch the commanders or something because if I'm fighting Lancelot Dragon Lancer with Richard Charles that's a win every time but this is the difference between this was an infantry only rally so i had infantry spec on richard so all the buffs hit all the troops um and then obviously charles is also an infantry uh, commander and i'm assuming and i could probably just take a peek yeah i mean they have all different types of troops here but most of them are t4 um except for what oh this was probably the the group that shiro captured the obelisk with at the beginning for those T1s. But yeah, I mean, you can see the difference. There's a there's a nicely leveled double C in Minamoto. Same thing, just got zeroed. He didn't have anything left. Um, another double C in Minamoto, almost zeroed out. Uh, had to run. Uh, I think I probably just hit them with a Richard AoE. Same thing here. Started hitting, didn't like what they saw, ran away. And then this was the actual obelisk, I guess, at the very end, and we took it, obviously. So that's a pretty good one. Um, Really nice. This was a, a open field battle. This was just a bad battle for them to take. Uh, this looks like it was against the rally too. I'm not sure why it's on a separate report. This was a really good one, uh, and I lost a bunch of them too. But uh, this was just me tanking a bunch of. This was the Sun Tzu Barka group, which again I I was happily happily impressed with the the Barka group, the Sun Tzu Barka group. They were doing it was doing tons of damage. It was tanking like crazy and there's no heals either so um i, I was really surprised uh, and just look at the the damage uh, this was a 225,000 troop army which is not that crazy when it started out it was 300 and something but i had been using it and moving it around and taking shrines and taking altars on my side with this group because it was it was so good it was i could just throw it at something and it would it would win um so you know Lestroyer, uh, he he dropped by about half. Here's his other army that got zeroed. Uh, Wangish got zeroed. Wangish got about 80% off on that army. Destroyer got zeroed again. Old Hero got zeroed. Scotty got zeroed. Swim Swimming Coach got zeroed. And then Scotty lost about you know 30% of his troops there. So I mean, and this was one army, and and I think they ran away once they got to the points where they got the ones that weren't defeated. So that I mean, that's what one two three four five six seven eight nine armies that it was tanking at any given time and it only went down by went from 225 to 134 so about 90,000 troops it went down by and I took out I mean that's a lot that's quite a bit so um, that was definitely one of the better fights that that happened and just I think the tankiness from Hannibal's first skill in combination with Sun Tzu's uh, damage reduction, it just really helps. I think that it's, it, it synergizes really well together. I think Scipio is also another option instead of Barca if you don't have Barca. Uh, if you have a maxed out Scipio, do Sun Tzu and Scipio as a secondary. I think that's just a free-to-play version of this army. You get the same amount of troop count because they're both 10% troop capacity increases. Uh, things like that. Oh, that was a big one. That was a rally that hit uh, my army <laughs> and just got messed up messed up 
Uh, okay, and then plunder, victory. Okay. Yeah, I think these are from other fights. Yeah. All right, so that's that's the battle reports that were of significance. There was a bunch more that I actually didn't get to because they, they actually deleted themselves. I had 153 new battle reports after the Ark of Osiris. It was, it was more than you could sift through. Uh, it was so many. It was just dots. It didn't have a number um, on the red, the red indicator. So um, let me give you some feedback. With T5, obviously, you're going to be slower than T4. That's a big deal. Um, so you need speed. And with my samurai, they put out some significant damage. But when it came down to it, I was behind because I couldn't get up to the front quickly. And then on top of that, when they were grabbing stuff behind me too, I had to then go back and recap stuff. And I think if I had either a cavalry-based uh, army that was more cav than infantry, or if I was Rome where I got that extra 5% movement speed, I think that would have went a long way. Um, and also just the tankiness of Rome, having the defense buff for the civilization and the legionnaires being uber defensive as well. I think I could have maybe just put my infantry armies in my side's altar and shrines and just kind of camp them there and then, then take my cavalry armies and go push the enemy obelisk with rallies with cavalry. I think that would have been a better play than what I did. We did a, an original rally and then we also did an infantry rally, but it was just a lot of back and forth and with T5, you just can't do that. Uh, you, you really can't do that. You need to camp out and be a stone, a mountain, where the players tr come to try and take care of a shrine or something, and they just break against your your defensive structure. So I think that's the play that I'm going to try and go for moving forward, is to have a lot more mobility. And then that brings up in the conversation, as far as civilization, which one's the way to go? Do I... Do I go another infantry civilization, which gives me that 5% movement speed, um, which is certainly helpful for my infantry, which are very slow, even with the infantry spec commander having that extra march speed inside those talents, it's still not a whole lot. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's interesting to see if maybe the way to go is to go with the cab civilization, especially with how many rallies we're doing, like in Arabia um, for Ark of Osiris or or do you stick with infantry? Uh, I think, I think if you're if you're the one that's that's being the camper, where you are really kind of camping out at the shrines and altars, and you need to have as much defense as possible, and you need to get to those locations as quickly as possible, Rome is the perfect choice because those two talents inside of the civilization pair very well with that. But if you're doing a lot of rallies and you're you're sending off a rally every five or ten minutes inside of Ark of Osiris. It may make sense to go to a an Arabia where you get some really good cavalry um, troops and you get that bonus to the rally. So let me just show you what I'm talking about here. Um, yeah, so you get the cavalry attack bonus and you also get a damage dealt by rallied armies by 5%. That's big, especially when you've got usually 700 to 1.5 million troops in a rally. That That's a lot of damage from 5%. Um, and I haven't seen it yet, especially if we were to do it with T5, but I'd imagine that may get a nerf because that's a lot of the, especially for a, a one troop rally, like a cavalry rally or an infantry rally, that's a big damage buff. So something to think about. Um, I think overall I was impressed with how the samurai did their damage. Uh, again, very slow. I loved how they looked. <laughs> Gold and black marching across the field is definitely a sweet, sweet thing to see. Um, and again, we eventually did get up to the front of their base and um, they pulled me into their base so I could kind of tank their T5 with two armies and that kind of thing, uh, which was nice. Uh, I think once my commanders are fully ranked out, so I'm, I'm maybe 50 sculptures away from ranking up uh, Richard to max, and then I need to start really plowing into Charles and getting that, that expertise skill for the 20% march speed, that'll really help. And once I get that, I may actually just keep it as an infantry um, an infantry civilization because I can just do infantry rallies and that'll be super fast. 
Five um, percent doesn't mean anything when you've got one point five million infantry coming your way super fast. So, um, yeah, that's it. I mean, again, just to recap, the the opposing side on our Ark of Osiris, they had a good game plan. You could tell they were organized. You can tell they knew what they they were supposed to be doing. I think the rally that that Ronnie launched on his side at the very beginning kind of threw them off. I didn't do that on my side because I gave him my troops um, at the beginning to load his rally up. So. I wanted to make sure that they took that obelisk if they were going to commit to a rally right at the beginning. So I went ahead and gave him mine before I teleported my city to the front obelisk. So I didn't have a, a, a cavalry rally to do because I didn't have any cavalry. Um, had I had my cavalry, I probably would have done a rally myself as well, and that would really would have really disrupted everything and maybe flipped the map a little bit and made it easier on us to to take the stuff moving forward instead of having to to go back and forth over and over so overall again very very fun battle this is the best part of rock right now in my opinion is is the Ark of Osiris battles and um, definitely starting to get into the the commentary piece I can't believe I hadn't for, hadn't really thought about it before um, since it came out uh, Ronnie kind of led that off that idea off and I'm so stealing it <laughs> um, but I'll give him credit for for kind of jumping into it first uh, but definitely looking forward to doing some of those commentaries with you all. And I appreciate y'all y'all subscribing and liking the videos and interacting with me on the, the channel. It's, it's appreciated and it's fun. And I, I really enjoy kind of bringing some of this stuff to you guys and uh, guys and gals. There's some gals in there. Um, for those of you that haven't subscribed, subscribe. I've been seeing a lot of views with non-subscribers. Fix that. Please subscribe. Uh, let's let's get the channel built up. I want to I want to have uh, a lot more content coming your way uh, Whenever I'm not working which has pretty much been what you've been seeing the last two weeks So I'm um, really trying to put a lot of stuff out there for y'all and you know Good stuff not just fluff. I, I think is the other thing. I, this is not a fluff channel. I'm not I'm not gonna make a video on um, You know which buildings look best or you know how to kill a level 14 barbarian like that that's hot garbage <laughs> so um again i think just to recap the actual purpose of the video I, I i think i will be switching to rome for the next arc uh especially until i get um, my charles maxed and then i'll have a decision to make with the cavalry if it makes sense to go with maybe a cavalry civilization because my infantry with two maxed charles commanders is that good that i don't really need to have the infantry perks. It's good enough to where I can maybe put those perks to better use on a cavalry or even an archer. You never know. Maybe once I get um, you know, Herman or El Cid and YSG maxed out, maybe it's time to go to Ottoman. You never know. So um, that'll do it for me. Again, cheers. I really appreciate y'all. Uh, go ahead and like and subscribe if you like this. Uh, I will be on business travel for three more days uh, starting today. So um, the videos will be slowing down a bit over the next few days as I will be doing other things but uh, as soon as I get back and in front of the computer I will make sure to put uh, more content out there for y'all and uh, get linked up with some of y'all to do to do your commentaries for your next Ark of Osiris in two weeks so appreciate you again cheers have a good one like and subscribe and have a good one I'll take y'all take care bye